Greetings, friends, and welcome back to Worship with the Longmeadow Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Auburn, New Hampshire. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, my name is Reverend Ruth Gallat. I'm the pastor of the Longmeadow Church, and I come to YouTube twice each week. I'm here every Sunday with a worship service that includes prayer, scripture, and a brief reflection on that scripture. And I also come every Wednesday with a special message for the children of our church, um, and throughout the summer, my theme is walking with Jesus. And I'm talking about different walks that Jesus took or things that he did on those walks, either with his disciples or by himself. And so I hope that you'll join with me on Wednesdays. I think that their message is not only for the children, but also for the adults as well. We are right in the middle of summer, probably smack dab on the middle Sunday. and. Uh, as is expected, a number of our uh, congregation members are on vacation and away or taking time off, and we celebrate that with you. If you are here because you missed uh, worship either in person or in Zoom, I'm so glad that you're here. I hope you are having a wonderful time of rest and renewal or adventure and excitement, whatever it is that you're seeking on your time away from your regular routines. I hope that you are finding it and know that we celebrate that with you. But I do hope I do hope that you have brought your traveling Jesus along with you and that you'll send us pictures of yourself, your family, your friends, whomever you are with in your time away uh, to us with your traveling Jesus picture so that we can put it up on our bulletin and share it and see where you have taken Jesus with you. You can either post it on our church's Facebook page, you can text it to me, you can send it to me by email, or you can just bring in a hard copy to worship when you return. So we look forward to sharing that with you. Also, if you live nearby, we are continuing with our school supply drive, which will run throughout July and August. Uh, we are seeking to fill backpacks for Auburn Village School, which will happen in mid-August so that we can get them to them. And then in September, we will have, um, we will be filling um, school kits for Church World Service. And so um, the list of the specific items that we need is in the newsletter, uh, or you can contact me if you would like me to send you that list. If you are feeling blessed by this time of worship and you would like to support the ongoing ministries of the Longmeadow Congregational Church, I've provided an address in the description down below where you can send any offerings of support that you would like. But your presence here is what we most desire and we pray that we are a blessing to you in your week. And so my friends, let us begin now our worship of God. We begin all of our time of worship with prayer, centering ourselves and inviting in God's presence with us. And so I invite you to join with me now. Lord, we are in the middle of the summer months. We give thanks for the opportunities we have had for vacations and times of rest from regular routines. But time is moving rapidly on and we can still find ourselves stressed and weary at times. We need to slow down. We know this, but yet find it hard to do at times. We load ourselves up with activities, stresses, duties, and then wonder how we will survive them. As you have found us before, Lord, find us again. Wrap your arms of compassion around us. Help us to savor the times that we have with each other. Make us keenly aware of the magnificence of this world, we pray, and draw us to the times of peace and rest. Lord, as we do each week, we give you thanks for our siblings in Christ, in churches throughout New Hampshire, in the Council of Churches, and this week we raise up to you the Loudoun Center Free Will Baptist Church, the Lyme Congregational Church, the First Baptist Church of Lyme, the United Church of Lyme Borough, Madbury United Church of Christ, Maranatha Indonesian United Church of Christ in Madbury, and the Madison Church. We thank you for the light these churches are in their communities, and we pray that they may continue to shine your light where they have been planted, and that they may continue to be a blessing to all. 
Lord, we also raise up to you this week the opportunity we had to gather with our friends and neighbors in Auburn in what we call our popcorn ministry, where we were able to serve free popcorn to all who came to the free outdoor concert. We give you thanks for all those who served and those who received and enjoyed and for the food shared, the bridges built, and the relationships started or developed. For all this, we give thanks. Gracious God, each week we raise up a different ministry in our church, and this week we raise up to you our stewardship ministry. We give thanks for how we work together to care for and utilize all that we've been given, that we may not simply survive, but that we may grow spiritually and as a community in order to continue to shine your light in the world. Turn our attention to the depths of our hearts that we might consider how giving reflects, how our giving reflects the realities of our discipleship and love for you and all your children. Just God, we sense your anger at the injustice that thrives in our world. We share your grief at the discord that rages among your children, the rejection of those who bear your image, and the oppression of those you know by name. We turn toward you for strength and guidance to turn away from the norms of this world and the lure of self-righteousness and the appeal of comfort over justice. Embolden us to believe that another world is possible and empower us to participate in its creation. Lord, we hold up to you now all who are ill or who are awaiting test results. We also pray for those who have died and for those who are grieving. As always, we remember your beloved children in Ukraine who still live under the shadow of war. We pray that peace will find a way. We pray for all those who are struggling with challenges in their lives of which we have no knowledge. But we know that you know all and that you hold all in your loving embrace. And we pray that all may be comforted and that all may feel and see your light. You, O oh God, are the one who is holy and righteous and makes us holy and righteous. We are participants, we are heirs and co-creators of new life found in the redemptive love of Jesus Christ and in the realm of the Holy One which has no end. In this grace abounds and we invite you in and ask that you liberate us to new mornings, new mercies, and new life as we lift our hearts to you now in silence. Seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given to you. Knock and the door will be opened to you. You have promised us grace and forgiveness in the love of Jesus Christ. And so we come home again to be the people you intended. All this we pray in the Spirit's power as we join together in the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This week we are continuing with our journey throughout the Gospel of Luke, picking up once again uh, right where we left off. Um, I'm reading Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. Again, that's Luke 11, 1 through 13. He, Jesus, was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. As he, and he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, 
and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find knock and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who searches finds, and everyone who knocks and, every, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Is there any one among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, will you give a scorpion? If you who are evil know how to give such good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This, my friends, is the Word of God. How much more? In thinking about this simple question that ends our scripture reading, I recognize that when I say that phrase, when I ask that simple question, it always seems to be a lament or a complaint. How much more rain are we going to get? Or how much longer is this heat wave going to last? We New Englanders complain about the weather a lot. <laughs> or how much more money is this going to cost me? Or how bad, <clears throat> how much bad news can I handle? Or how much sorrow can I bear? But like with all things, in the hands and heart of God, my laments and complaints receive a response of comfort and love. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? I was curious if this was an anomaly, and so I did a search for that phrase, how much more, in the Bible. Such research has been made infinitely easier and quicker since the development of the internet. And I found that in nearly every case, this phrase is nearly always a positive question or promise of blessings from God. In Matthew, Jesus says, how much more valuable is a human being than a sheep? And in Romans, Paul says, Now if their stumbling means riches for the world, and if their loss means riches for Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? And he goes on to say in 2 Corinthians, How much more will the ministry of the Spirit come in glory? God takes our laments about pain, about sorrow, about limits, and turns them into promises of healing and joy and abundance. How much more than you can even imagine will I give to you? Simply turn to me and allow me to give. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. I believe these promises with my whole heart. But like many of you, I have said fervent, unceasing prayers and still did not receive the answer I desired. I poured every ounce of energy, every molecule of faith, every drop of tears I possessed into prayers for my darling husband's life. But it was not to be. Did this shake my faith? You bet it did. When confronted with profound tragedy in our lives, tragedy that cuts us to our very heart, and to not receive the one thing we desire can throw everything we believe into turmoil. And that, my friends, is no sin. 
I want you to hear that really clearly. To have your faith shaken. To feel in turmoil because of profound tragedy and pain is no sin. God can take our doubts. God can take our anger. God can take anything that we can throw at God in our brokenness and in our grief because God is tough and understanding and patient and loving and wants more than anything to be in relationship with us right there in our darkest moments. God will not turn from your anger. God will stay right there with you. Prayer, my friends, is complex. It isn't like a vending machine that you put your coins or your debit card into, press the right number, and out will fall exactly what you ordered. It doesn't work that way. And anyone who tells you that all you need to do is to pray and you will get whatever you want, frankly, is a liar. Prayer is about relationship and relationships are complex growing evolving all the time even in today's text that exhorts us to ask seek and knock it doesn't promise that we will get what we want it promises how much more the heavenly father will give the holy spirit to those who ask him it promises presence it promises relationship, and it invites us into both of these wholeheartedly. And so we come to God over, we can come to God over and over without fear of bothering or annoying or tiring or angering God with our pleas. In his commentary on this passage, David Lowe's notes, that the word many Bibles translate as persistent in Jesus' parable on prayer, anaidea, would actually be better translated as shameless. Our petitions to God, Jesus says, should be bold and audacious and shameless. And I like that. We should never be ashamed to come before God, even when we're angry and bereft. We should never be ashamed to bring our full brokenness to God. We can bring our heartbreak, grief, anger, everything to God without fear of ever being abandoned. As Lowe's goes on to say, prayer is praise, prayer is thanksgiving, prayer is conversation, prayer is questioning, prayer is arguing, prayer is lamenting. Prayer is all these things and more. But prayer is also, and perhaps fundamentally, asking God for what we most need and desire shamelessly. And so, in the incredible shakiness of my faith, hanging on by a thread at my husband's bedside. I shamelessly offered everything I had and I received the presence, the relationship of the Holy Spirit that God had promised and that presence never let me go, even when I could hold on no longer. Yeah, I was broken but with the accompaniment of that spirit, over time, I grew stronger in the broken places. There are scars, but like a bone that was broken and healed, I grew stronger right in those broken places. Yeah, I asked, I pleaded, sought, yelled for, knocked, and downright pounded on the door. 
and did not receive what I wanted. But I received the never-ending, never-failing comfort of the Spirit, who never let me go through the long weeks and months of grief that still on occasion rears its terrible head right to this day. And so, my beloved friends, keep on asking, seeking, and knocking shamelessly. Never give up. Never feel shame to bring anything before God. Never let go. For how much more beloved are you to our God than you ever imagined? Thanks be to God. And so, my friends, I thank you for joining me here this week. And if you are on vacation, I hope you're having a wonderful time. I wish you blessings. I wish you peace and rest. I wish you excuse me, amazing adventures. Whatever you seek in your time away, I pray you find. Ask, seek, knock shamelessly, my beloved friends. Never give up, for you are held and loved beyond your wildest imaginings. Go in peace and return in joy until we meet again. Goodbye.